Well, it is London Fashion Week, and the gods and goddesses of style and beauty have descended on the UK's capital city. And Stephanie Tetchy is a lifestyle blogger and joins us right here in the studio straight from a fashion show. Yes. Yeah, tell me what you've seen so far today. Yeah, I have seen so many different designs for autumn winter. It's just amazing. Like, obviously, we're looking to head back to more kind of gothic tones for autumn winter from September. There's a bit of psychedelic prints as well. A lot of Afrocentric prints as well have hit back onto the catwalk as well. A lot of fur. I'm a fan of fur. So it looks like the fur's coming back big and bold. Real next fur? Season. Real fur? No, no. Oh, okay. I just interviewed, the last show I went to was Belle Savage, and I just interviewed the designers. I was like, you guys have used fur. They were like, nope, it's all fake. Don't worry, because oh, I think okay. that would cause more controversy. If, if, it, if it was in Paris or Milan, it yeah. would be real fur. It definitely would be real fur, because they're all about their elegance, they're all about the quality, and there is something about real fur that gives it more that prestige than fake fair. And I, I heard you say, Stephanie, that the, you saw a lot of African-inspired uh, fabrics yeah. and designs, but what about any emerging African designers? Any for this fashion week for the fall? Well, the, the disappointing thing is it's never about the catwalk with the African um, designs. It's more about the celebrities that you spot wearing the Afrocentric designs. And what tends to happen is, like, you've got your Rihanna's, your Solange Knowles, your Gwen Stefani's, and even Jamie Foxx has been seen at fashion shows wearing Afrocentric designs. And what that does is create a buzz about the designers behind them. So we've got new emerging designers such as David Loin, Oswald Botang, who's obviously more established. We've got um, clothing, and we've got jewel designs as well. So people like that are coming up, which is creating more. Can you see a, a time when an African designer will become as big as, say, an Armani, a, you know, a brand, a world brand like Armani, for example? I think so, because in, just in like last year, December, Ghana had their first fashion week, and it had so many people turning up from like Vogue, from America and all that stuff. So for many years now, people have been going to Africa to be inspired by the design. So it's only a matter of time before someone is big enough to be like, I can stand by my own and you know you guys should come to me rather than me come to you. We want to show uh, some pictures to our viewers of the New yeah. York fashion week. Yeah, we want to sure. make sure that they understand that. Is there a big difference or what is the difference uh, particularly between say New York's fashion mm -hmm. week and London's fashion week? I think with New York they've got more of a commercial edge to their fashion. They play it very safe where if you're looking for the trendsetters it's all about London. London is where they come to be inspired. London we're not we don't play it safe. We rather be reckless and you've got your heritage brands like Vivian Westwood, Alexander McQueen, your Oswald Botangs who just think out of the box. So I think that's the difference that you will find here. Mm -hmm. And as, as, if you can see the pictures uh, looking there. Amazing. How is how is this these fashions that you're seeing here on this video different than what you've seen today? I think with these kind of designs, they're very cut, they're very clean, and they're very kind of fine. Where the designs I've seen today have been very raw, very edgy, very in your face. And that's very much about London fashion, we're in your face. Yes, they, they, they kind of, and people out there are watching and they just take something, an essence of it, rather yeah. than necessary cut. Although, I mean, Vivian Westwood was yeah. punk, and yeah. you know, that really, really took off. Yeah. With the safety pins and all that. Yeah. It back in the day. Totally. And those kind of designs, it's like they move onwards with London. We don't kind of stick to one thing. Like one one season, it could be all about Afrocentric prints, but next season, it could be more futuristic. Like last season, it was all about space designs and stuff. Now, you, you, sorry, you were talking yeah. about um, you know famous people you know, yeah. wearing Afrocentric. Yeah. But Rihanna has yeah. been out her own, yeah. her own fashion label for um, River, River Island. Island, which is a UK yeah. store. That is going to be the most big biggest story of London Fashion Week because she could have done it in New York, she could have done it in Milan, she could have done it in Paris, but Rihanna said time and time again she's a big fan of London fashion and especially for a high street brand like River Island which is very fast thinking and very forward thinking as well. She's picked the right brands for that and I think the team together, them working together would just be a fab 
collection. Have you gotten a sneak peek? Have you seen any of it? Tomorrow stuff, is the big show. And she's actually, online, she's revealed some pictures of like a blue tracksuit from it, which is velour. It's really safe. But I think knowing Rihanna, it's going to be very sexy, very saucy. And I think all eyes are going to definitely be on London tomorrow. If I can jump in, the fashions that we see, are they going to be made for what I want to call real women, not those yes. thick yeah. thin model bodies? <laughs> But, you know, Bobby's like, we have. Like me. <laughs> I wish I could start a petition for that because today all of the designs I've seen have been, you know, the models have been stick thin, like size six, size eight, which is nothing wrong. It's fair enough, but give the big girls love like us. But actually, on Saturday, we'll see the beginning of the alternative, which is plus size fashion weekend. Now, this is an initiative that's been raised by a stylist and a designer because they just had enough. They're being plus size girls themselves. So what's this, what this weekend's going to do, it's going to promote the models who are of plus size from size 12 upwards, the designers who are making for the plus size ladies. But it's not going to be cheap because this this thing where you think because it's plus size, it's not got that high-end fashion thing to it, that this is what this weekend's going to do. It's going to represent high-end fashion for plus size models. Uh, Sophie Dole really let the side down because yeah. she started off beautiful, big, yeah. gorgeous, yeah. and then she lost all that weight. I think, I think it's always different when you're in the limelight. You have to be a very strong woman to be like, this is my size and I'm going to stay with it. Because in Hollywood, you've got a lot of people who are like size 10 and that's considered fat. So I think for her, the pressure got to her. And then what happens is a lot of these celebrities, they lose their weight and they'll be like, oh, I had to do it for a while or for health matters. And it's just, you seem less glamorous if you're plus size where really we've got curves for a reason. <laughs> all right. Exactly. Well, Stephanie Tisha, thank you so much. It was much. lovely meeting you Of guys. course, Fashion Week is going to be going on all next week, yeah. and we are going to be covering it, bringing you the highlights from it. 